I am so excited about this lesson because this lesson is going to give you direction. We're still talking about prisoners of hope, but today we're talking about what is the object of the turn? Why should I turn? And to whom am I turning? And I know that many of you probably listened to the last program or watched the last program and you struggled with the turning. Well, your struggles will be over if you listen carefully today as to to whom am I turning? We're still back in Zechariah 9 and 12. Here's the word of the Lord. Turn ye to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee. So the question today is, what or who or to whom am I turning? You know, you see, you cannot have hope if you keep turning to the wrong person and the wrong thing. You can't have hope if you keep turning your mind to the same dead thoughts. It shouldn't have happened this way. You know, why did it happen this way? How come things were different? If you keep asking those questions, you're going to be depressed. Just go ahead and get depressed. But if you want to come out of the pit, you have to change your direction. Okay? Turn ye to the stronghold. Who are you turning to? The stronghold. Stronghold here in the text means the almighty God. Not to a place. Not to a fortified place. Not to isolation, going into yourself, separating yourself from people, hiding from people, becoming a workaholic, getting busy doing things. No, sometimes we turn to those kinds of activities to isolate and insulate ourselves. Turn to the Almighty God, the Creator God, the God of the universe, the God who holds time and life in His hands the eternal and all-wise God. That's who you turn to. You turn to him in prayer. You turn to him in reading his word. Because turning to anything else will only disappoint you. And you'll be worse depressed than you are now. Biblical reference here is Psalm 18 and 2, the word of the Lord. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge. He's my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. You write that scripture down, Psalm 18, 2. And when you feel as if you have nowhere to turn, you call and the line is busy. You call and the, and the cell phone is full. You knock on somebody's door and they're not there. So who do you turn to? You turn to God. You don't even need a telephone call. You can stand right there and call him. Nahum 1 and 7. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust him. He is a mighty God. The word stronghold means citadel. It means fortress. It means protector. It means rock. He wants to hold you steady so you won't slip. He wants to keep your mind from snapping. I rebuke snapping minds right now. I know you watch that reality show called Snap, and most of them snap people end up in jail. You have to believe that God can hold you together in the midnight hour. Oh, he's a heart fixer, as the old folks would say, and a mind regulator. Just have to look to him. Return to your place at hope, of hope. There is no hope in this world outside of God. Now, now answer me. Where can you go to find peace and hope right now? Your relatives? They're looking for the same thing. Your friends, uh, uh, a rhythm and blues song, it'll only make you depressed. Where do you go? To the restaurant to eat yourself into oblivion? Oh, 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 you go shopping and spend your rent money, and next thing you know, you're, there's a dispossessed notice on your door. Whatever substitutes we use, some drugs, some alcohol, some sex, some whatever, it will not work. Hear me. Come back to God. Job 27 and 8 says, For what hope has the godless when he's cut off, when God takes away his life? There is no hope or life in anyone else but the Almighty. He's the life giver. Return to your place of protection and prosperity. I travel all over the world. 
And I know recently we heard about the, 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 the president of Poland and his cabinet members just in one blow and one strike, the plane blew up and all of them are gone. And I have to get on the plane this week. I have to travel this week. Now, if I have no hope and I am laden with fear, I will not get on another plane. I will live my life cramped up, separated from my assignment. God is sending me to do his will. But if I lose my hope in his what? Protection. I got to believe that he's going to take care of me in the plane. I can't live my life shaking. Oh my God, oh my God, suppose, suppose, I might as well stay home and just, just not do anything. The Lord is a defense in our lives. Psalm 27 and 1, one of my favorite psalms. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom or what shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom or what shall I what? Be afraid. Psalm 27 and 4. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. He not only promises me protection, but prosperity. And in Psalm 23, I love that latter verse, which says, Surely goodness and mercy shall what? Pursue me, follow after me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I believe it, I believe it, I believe it. I believe that God has sent his mercy and grace to run after me. When I walk with the Lord, I've got grace and mercy running after me. Now, some of us don't even realize how much God has protected us. The car should have tripped over. The gunshot should have just blown our heads off. That tea that we drank, we didn't know it was laden with poison. We should have been dead. Some people that we went out with, they were planning to kill us. And God took you out and preserved you. I'm telling you, the only hope we have is in who? Jesus. Glory to God, glory to God. He's the only one to help us in this world of turmoil. Though Satan's foes oppress and our hearts distress, but we have this hope. And it's in Christ Jesus. Let's look at the reflection. Our creator God is the object of our repentance. Don't you want a place in your life? Don't you want to place your life rather in the hands of God? Don't you think you should? He knows the end from the beginning. He knows you're rising up and you're setting down. He knows your thoughts before you think them. Don't you think you ought to just trust him? You can't play him. You can't get rid of him. David says, where shall I go from the presence of the Lord? If I fly to the utmost parts of the world, behold, I'm here. You know how many of you try to run from God, and before you got there, he was waiting for you? You were sitting there thinking that you were there without God, and God showed up? Can't get away from him. Today, come back to your place of safety, of hope, and of eternal life. Help. Lust is after my anointing. This is a classic. This is a classic. Something wants to keep you from your blessing. Someone is trying to poison your mind against walking with God. And sometimes it's your own mind that has you trapped where you can't come up. Come up. This will help you to come up. Get it. it listen. It will mess you up so that you will never doubt God again. Right here. Order it immediately. Order 10 copies. Because there's so many people out there who are losing hope. Losing their grip on what they believe. And they're living a life in darkness. Every morning they wake up, it's dark. Every night they go to bed, it's hopelessness. You have a right to bless somebody today. And may God bless you today.